Depending on the fitting of the square tapered crank, bolt or nut, use either a socket or hex key to unscrew it. Make sure you remove any washer that's under the head of the bolt. A crank puller is a unit that screws into the threads on the inside of the square tapered crank holes. A bolt that runs through it jams against the axle to force the square tapered crank off the tapered axle. Retract the bolt from the crank puller. Almost all square tapered cranks use the Italian standard 22mm thread, but some old French strong light or TA cranks need a different crank puller. Check the threads on the inside of the square tapered crank hole are clean and apply a smear of grease. Screw the crank puller into the threads. Do this carefully as the threads on the aluminium square tapered crank are soft and easily damaged. Finger strength is usually enough. Drive the bolt into the square tapered crank. When the crank puller is fully in the square tapered crank, screw in the bolt on the crank puller. It will jam against the axle and force the crank off the taper. Unscrew the tool from the square tapered crank arm and repeat the operation on the other side. Remove the cranks. If the bearing is serviceable, the left hand cup will have a lock ring around the outside. Turn this anti-clockwise to unlock the cup. This is easiest with a lock ring spanner that fits the notches on the ring exactly. You can also use a universal tool with one tooth or tap it round with a hammer and an old screwdriver. Remove the lock ring. Once the lock ring has moved back, the cup can move. If the cup and cone bottom bracket has hexagonal flats, turn it with a spanner. If it has holes, use a peg spanner. Turn the left cup, the adjustable cup, anti-clockwise. Remove the left cup. Collect the balls from the left side. They may be loose or in a clip. 
Pull out the axle and note which way it fits. It may not be symmetrical. One side may be longer than the other. Remove the balls from the other side. On most bikes, the right cup, the fixed cup, is screwed in on a left-hand thread. The exceptions are some old Italian and French bikes. The fixed cup may have two shallow flats or be hexagonal. There is a bike shop tool that locks a socket onto the fixed cup to turn it and various spanners that fit fixed cups. As a last resort, you may need to partially strip the frame, clamp the cup in a vise and twist the whole frame. Remove the old balls and replace with a set of exactly the same size. They are usually quarter inch. It's better to use loose balls as you can fit more in than if they're in a clip. Usually loose is 11 each side. There are usually nine in a clip. More balls means each one carries a lighter load. Clean the axle and cups with degreaser. Check the components on the cup and cone bottom bracket for wear and pitting. If you need to replace the bearing with a new one, the most important issue is the length of the axle. Pack the left cup with grease and press the balls into the grease. Grease the threads on the frame with anti-seize assembly grease, unless the right cup is on a standard right hand thread, in which case clean its frame threads and the outside of the right cup with acetone. Let it dry and apply thread lock adhesive. Right cups on a standard thread tend to unscrew in use. If the fixed cup is out, pack it with grease and press the balls into the grease and screw it in on the right side. It usually goes in on a left hand thread. If the fixed cup is in the frame, put a sausage of grease around the right race of the axle and press the balls into the grease. Feed the axle into the frame, taking care not to disturb the balls. Make sure the axle goes in the correct way round. The longer arm, if there is one, usually goes on the right. Any writing on the axle usually reads from left to right. <laughs> 
screw the left cup into the frame. Fit the lock ring loosely. Fit the right hand crank to help test the bearing on the cup and cone bottom bracket. Adjust accordingly and then tighten the lock ring to fix into position. Replace the left crank. Depending on the way the tools fit, it may be easier to do this job with the left hand crank off. It's useful to have one crank on the axle for testing the tightness of the bearing. If the bearing is adjustable, the left hand cup will have a lock ring around the outside. Turn this anti-clockwise to unlock the cup. This is easiest with a lock ring spanner that fits the notches on the ring exactly. You can also use a universal tool with one tooth or tap it round with a hammer and an old screwdriver. Once the lock ring has moved back, the cup can move. If it has hexagonal flats, turn it with a spanner. If it has holes, use a peg spanner. If the bearing is too loose, screw the cup inwards clockwise. If it's too tight, screw the cup outwards anti-clockwise. Make small adjustments and check between them. Once the bearing is in the target zone, hold the cup still with the tool and screw the lock ring down against the frame to jam the cup in place. Make a final check and replace the crank. Fit a square taper crank onto the axle. If the axle has a hole, grease the threads. A bolt with a hexagonal head or socket goes on with a washer underneath it. Use a socket or hex key to tighten the bolt which pulls the crank tight on the axle. If the axle has a threaded boss, grease the inside of the nut. If the square taper cranks are pulled on by a nut, it usually doesn't need a washer. Fit the second square taper crank at 180 degrees and repeat the process.
With the bike on the ground, set the cranks horizontal with the pedals at 3 and 9 o'clock. Press down on both pedals, then lift both pedals. If the cranks move independently of each other, they are loose and must be tightened before the bike is ridden. If the bike has more than one chain ring, shift the chain onto the smallest. Push the bottom jockey wheel forward to relax the chain. Lift the chain off the small chain ring and move the chain carefully inside the chain rings so they can spin without interference. Spin the cranks. They must turn freely with no clicks or catches and minimum friction in the bottom bracket. Grab a crank and pull it from side to side. If there's discernible movement, play, the bearing in the bottom bracket is too loose. 